Houston was the perfect place for the experiment. There was a need for a different kind of church in Houston. God knew we needed a shaking. I really felt like the, the encourager would be a, a kind of an apostolic church. There were people that had heard of the reputation of God doing things here in the way of healing at Encourager. They were coming from, from nearby cities to receive healing. Instead of being called a church, we were the people who care. Texas has been hustling for 100 years, and now it's hustled itself into being not only the oil and petrochemical capital of the world, but also Space City, USA. Well, this story began with a lot of frustration. I was traveling the state of Texas, responsible for the training of believers to witness to their faith in the 5,000 churches of the Baptist Convention, and only a hundred of the 5,000 produced as many as a hundred decisions a year. Pastors were not equipping anyone. They were simply patting people on the head and telling them how to live a happy life for one more week. The churches themselves were little bubbles that people lived inside unaware of what was happening in the society around them. I finally decided that I was going to find a New Testament version of what is in the book of Acts. I had received an invitation from a group here in the city to come and preach for them. They wanted to plant a brand new church in West Houston. We started asking different people that we thought might be interested in starting a church. First, we went to some of the churches and asked if they would be interested in starting a mission. And uh, actually, none of them would be. I guess kind of felt like we would be competition to them, which we had no intention of. Just through word of mouth to different people, a little group of us got together, and there were probably about five or six couples that began meeting on Tuesday nights in our home. We have been there, Jack and I, <laughs> I've been there from the very beginning. I remember on my birthday, December the 15th, 1968, we moved our membership. And the first part of January, we had a man from the evangelism department of the Baptist General Convention of Texas come to preach for us. His name was Ralph Neighbor, and he preached messages like I had never heard before. I didn't know at that time that the Holy Spirit could live within you. When Ralph Neighbor came that first Sunday and preached to us, he told about the indwelling Holy Spirit and it totally changed my life. And I think that has been the focus of West Memorial Encourager Church all the way through. I told them what I was planning on doing and they said, well, hey, come on down here. We'll do it with you. And we had a journey that God had for us that we never would have expected. When Max and I uh, came to West Memorial, it was after we really had a hunger to, to know more, to grow. These opportunities were presenting themselves at West Memorial. He was br bringing in outstanding pastors and ministers and evangelists to teach and to train. One of my neighbors said, have you been at that weird Baptist church on Derry Ashford? And I thought, weird, I'm into weird, I'm going to go check it out. So <laughs> I did. I went on uh, Palm Sunday. When I came out, I thought, I don't know what that is, but I want it. And I know now that it was the Holy Spirit, but that was my impression. We had many healings and we had many, many miracles. 
But we had drug addicts, prostitutes that came to our church. It was kind of a, Ralph described it as a hospital for people. We were baptizing probably 50 to how many people a year? Uh, 100 probably. To 100 people a year, yeah. We had to learn as a new body of Christ, wanting to be New Testament, that we had to change something far more than the structure. We had to change the anointing that comes upon the people of God to minister in the spirit and not in the flesh. And my whole focus from the very moment we started was, I have got to prepare every single Christian to be able to witness on their own. Every place that there were people, we were just totally focused on that and training ourselves to, uh, to do that. I can remember coming out of a, a church service when Ralph preached, just I couldn't wait to get out and, and tell people about Jesus. He, he kept saying, you don't have the hired holy man do all the evangelism. That's, that's Every right. person is in the yeah. The same philosophy we had for the adults, we had for the teenagers. You are a minister and you are going to be called by God for your ministry. Both of my kids were saved for Sunday became. Wow. That was awesome. That's, That's right. awesome. That's awesome. West Memorial had planned a youth retreat in Galveston. Both of the girls went and took a friend because they knew no one at West Memorial. And they came home on Saturday night after having been the week at the beach. And our senior in high school said, so impressed, could we visit that church tomorrow? And the secret was equipping the teenagers to lead the groups rather than having adults do it. And it became so powerful. This was one of the great things that happened. The simple principle that every person needs to have a ministry called by the Holy Spirit, not challenge to, hey, let's do this because this is a project of the church. He was very strong in the evangelistic strategies and so forth, but he also believed very powerfully in the mobilization um, of the people. This is why the spiritual gifts were so important, I think, in his life. God used Ralph Neighbor to put a DNA into this church that would give it, it would, it would be like a wine skin that could take a lot of new wine. And that was the real launching pad for the body of Christ called the people who care.